We live in a world in which we take everyday technology for granted. Mobile phones, high-speed trains, airplanes, and we've even been to the moon. One would say we know it all, but not us, not here. We take you further than the mysteries Earth can bring. We bring you the mysteries of the universe. This episode will look deeper into nature's most prominent, always apparent, yet so very mystical force, gravity. Gravity is everywhere. Without it, we would be happily floating off this planet into the vast nothingness of space. In fact, we could even state that without gravity, anything like ourselves or this planet would never have existed at all. So, in theory, this rock should be attracted to this rock, but why don't they move closer to each other? That's because gravity is so small, it has almost no effect on these rocks. Because gravity is so small, it can only be noticed on the planetary level. So that's why we are only attracted to the biggest rock around, Earth. It's the cause of the moon's orbit around the Earth and the Earth's orbit around the Sun. I think gravity is extremely fascinating, for we couldn't and wouldn't exist without it. Ever since Sir Isaac Newton did his revolutionary research on gravity, our understanding of the universe has taken like a giant leap forward and that's positive in my opinion and when we once thought that Jerusalem was the world center and that there was said to be no more than the church, the sun, a flat earth, uh, the moon and a few dozen stars. Let me take you back to 1665. It was a great year in the understanding of our universe. It's the year Newton first announced his gravitational law and explains why gravity is only noticeable on a planetary level. Our basic understanding of gravity can be laid into this simple formula. Gravity equals the mass of the first object multiplied by the mass of the second object divided by the distance squared times g. This very basic formula is only a small part of this very complicated force we call gravity. Unfortunately, there was a defect in his formula. Newton did not know what g actually was, so he was never able to put his famous formula to use. Eventually, centuries later, scientists defined g as 6.673 times 10 to the power of minus 11 newton square meter per square kilogram. Without the constant g, we would not be able to calculate planetary orbits around stars, those of the satellites around our own Earth, the moons of Jupiter, or anything else in this universe. On Earth, gravity has an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second per second. We can show this in a very simple experiment. All we need is a meter of height, a stone, and time. When we drop a stone along the scale at exactly 1 meter high, we can calculate the acceleration by inserting our values into this very simple formula. The outcome is, as expected, 9.81 meter per square second, exactly the gravitational acceleration on Earth. Everything in the universe is attracted to another mass, which is what we call gravity. And everything, it's truly amazing. Even we, as humans, we were attracted to each other and we didn't even notice. Yet, if we were to be the only ones floating around in this universe, we'd slowly start to move together. That's what happened in the beginning of the universe, when those tiny little particles started to blob together, becoming heavier, becoming eventually even stars, like our sun. Even after knowing so much, there are still a lot of mysteries circling around gravity. 
We know how to calculate an object's gravity. We know where gravity can be found, which is basically everywhere. But what we don't know is how or why it came to existence. Before we can know that, we must first truly understand gravity. And in order to do that, we first have to know what mass is. In ordinary life, people tend to confuse mass with weight. But in fact, they are two completely different things. For example, when a person stands on a scale, the needle would point to approximately 80 kilograms. But when he does the same thing on the moon, that person won't weigh any more than 15 kilograms. But that doesn't mean his mass has decreased. Mass is a characteristic of matter and can be divided into two kinds of mass. Inertial mass and gravitational mass. Galileo described the first characteristic of mass, its inertia. It's basically its slowness. His theory basically describes why a heavy object is harder to move than a light object. Gravitational mass is the measure of magnitude of gravity which is either exerted by an object called active gravitational mass or experienced by an object which is called passive gravitational mass. Active gravitational mass is a property of the mass of an object that produces a gravitational field in the space surrounding the object. Gravitational fields hold the galaxies together. They cause clouds of gas and dust to form into stars and planets. They provide the necessary pressure for nuclear fusion to occur within stars. They determine the orbits of various objects within the solar system. The moon has less active gravitational mass than Earth, so its gravitational field is weaker. For example, an object in freefall near the moon will experience less gravitational field and hence accelerate slower than the same object would if it were in freefall near the Earth. For a time, mass and energy were seen as two separate things. Albert Einstein did just the opposite. With his famous formula, E is mc squared, he proved that mass and energy can be converted into each other. But unfortunately, that was not that simple. One of the few ways in which it can be done is nuclear fusion. But still then, in the final product, the object would have lost a little bit of mass by already having emanated a lot of energy. Now having said that, Albert Einstein did another great discovery. He proved that the sun, by emanating energy in both light and warmth, he proved that the sun is slowly losing mass. Research has shown that gravitational mass and inertial mass are directly proportional to each other. So twice as much inertial mass means twice as much gravitational mass. That explains why two objects with very different masses fall at the same speed. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon and I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Well, I'm not that proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Talking about falling, let's start to investigate deeply into why gravity exists. What and why mass is attracted to another mass? We don't really know why mass attracts other mass. But that's the fun, to find out, to truly find out where gravity exists. We have to look deeper into the quantum physics of gravity. We, what it does on the smallest level, even smaller than atoms, maybe even smaller than photons. When venturing deeper into the nature of gravity, we have to look at things even smaller than our sun. Smaller than the stones I have in my hand. Smaller than the bacteria on the stone. Smaller than the atoms. 
We have to look at things so small, we are not even sure if we can still call them objects. We have to go to the quantum level. In the current quantum theory, nature knows four fundamental forces. These are not forces like we are used to. There is the strong force, the force that pulls protons together into the core of an atom. The weak force, the force that causes radioactive decay and the allowance of nuclear fusion to happen. The electromagnetic force, the force that induces electromagnetic waves like light or Wi-Fi. But the most interesting of all is gravitation. To gain a better understanding of gravity, we need to look further than Newton's ideas. Newton thought of gravity as something that is and not something that has to become. The first one to revisit his idea was Albert Einstein, 200 years later. Albert Einstein worked as a clerk in a patent office in Switzerland, while he pondered about how fundamental the speed of light is. He reckoned and proved that nothing in the universe could travel faster than light, not even gravity. By saying this, he went straight into contradiction with Newton, as he claimed that gravity was instant. Let's take our solar system as an example. What if our sun would strangely enough disappear in thin air? According to Newton's laws, the planets would immediately continue straight ahead at the exact moment the sun had disappeared. This would of course not be possible in Einstein's theory, when nothing is faster than light. Light from our sun needs 8 minutes to travel the 150 million kilometers to Earth. Gravity should therefore take at least as much time. Years passed before Einstein could properly explain his theory. After 20 years of pounding his brain, he could finally illustrate his ideas. First, he had to combine the three dimension of space and time into one single fabric, space-time. Einstein hoped that by putting those four things together as one of the same piece of information, space-time, you would get a clearer vision of what actually happened in the universe. How the mass of an object would bend and warp the fabric and that in its turn would change another object's path. It's this warping or curving of space-time that we feel and understand as gravity. Let's rerun our small experiment with Einstein's ideas. This time with our sun in the middle of a small piece of space-time orbited by the Earth. The gravitational disturbance that is caused by the sudden disappearance of the Sun causes a ripple in the spatial fabric, similar as the waves a pebble makes when it's dropped into a pond. We wouldn't notice a change in our orbit around the Sun until this wave hits the Earth. What's more, Einstein calculated that these ripples move at exactly the speed of light. With this theory, Einstein solved this conflict with Newton, and what's more, he gave the world an entirely new vision to what the force of gravity actually is. Warps and curves in the fabric of space and time. Einstein called this theory general relativity and in a short period of time he became one of the most well-known physicists in the world. With this new approach to gravity as a force we can reconstruct our theories on how it works and where it comes from. With Einstein's theory in mind we can even ask ourselves if gravity is a force at all as it's nothing more than a wrinkle in what he calls space-time. There's still one thing missing though. All the fundamental forces require a kind of conductors before they can work. Those conductors are called bosons. The strong force is transduced by gluons. The electromagnetic force by the well-known photons. The weak force is transduced by weak bosons. In theory, gravitation is mediated by gravitons. The problem here is though, that we have yet to experimentally prove their existence. The best way to do this is by reconstructing the Big Bang, observing what happened in the first few seconds of the universe. This is where the Large Hadron Collider comes in. This giant magnetic tube is surrounded by the world's most expensive sensors. It's contributed by universities from all around the world. It's truly wonderful to see the dedication people are willing to spend on this machine. And it's 27 uh, kilometer circumference is spread underneath the Swiss Alps, making it the biggest underground object man has ever made. The Large Hadron Collider is a giant magnetic tube in which protons are accelerated to extremely high speeds, almost the speed of light. The protons hopefully collide with each other underneath one of the big sensors around the circumference. When they do, they replicate a miniature Big Bang in which the protons will become pure energy and will explode into new matter. The data from the collision, recorded by the sensor, 
can be analyzed and hopefully prove the existence of a graviton. We are getting closer and closer to the discovery of the magical boson that will hopefully solve the eternal mystery of gravity. All we can do now is wait for the day to come. But while we wait, there are plenty of other mysteries to be solved.